Amen. Amen. That's a timely word for us today. I need you to survive. It is a timely word in a society in which we are afraid of each other, in which we have not yet achieved Dr. King's beloved community, in which we have not yet achieved God's plan for us to be people of love who live together as one, who love neighbor as self, as one body together. I need you. You need me to survive. As we continue our sermon series, The Gospel According to Mr. Rogers, today, we're going to look at how Mr. Rogers talked about the spiritual gifts that Paul tells each of us that Christ has given unto us. So let us look at 1 Corinthians, that's near the back of your Bible, and it's one of what we call the letters that were written, and we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in the first verse. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be misinformed. You know that when we were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And, the, and there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship, here we are to bow down, here we are to say that you are indeed our worthy and our holy God. So blow a fresh wind and a fresh fire through here and through us, O oh God. Transform us. Do not allow us to leave the same way we entered. Take this, your servant, and hide her behind that old rugged cross, because we've come expecting a word from you. So speak, Lord. We are listening. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. In a documentary called Won't You Be My Neighbor that came out last year, Mr. Rogers said, Do you remember what it's like to be a child? Hmm. Do you remember what it's like to be a child? I'm going to make a stretch <laughs> and do something that we're not supposed to do. I'm just going to assume that some of us have forgotten what it means to be a child. 
You remember the curiosity? Do you remember how everybody we came in contact with was a new person to be discovered and that we loved them just because they existed and we liked them just the way they were? Before we got caught up in the color of our skin and the level of our education and our social status, and our financial status before our parents and neighbors and the news taught us how to hate each other, do you remember what it was like to be a child? Hmm. I think I might like enjoying, I think I might quite enjoy being a child again. I wish somebody had told me when I was a child, or I wish I had listened when somebody told me when I was a child that adulting is hard. So today, we're going to pretend to be children. We're going to go to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Don't you remember that when Mr. Rogers came home every day, he took his blazer off. You remember he took his suit coat off and he hung it in the closet. I don't have a closet, but we're going to use this as a hanger. And he took out of the closet a sweater. And he, he relaxed a little bit. Do you remember? He, he relaxed a little bit and he buttoned up his sweater because that was relaxing for Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and, 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 and he took off his shoes, didn't he? He took off his, his formal work shoes. And, and he put those on the bench, under the bench in his front room and he, he put on some tennis shoes. Praise the Lord, Jesus. I get to wear tennis shoes today. And, and the people who knocked on Mr. Rogers' door in the neighborhood, they taught us things. But they taught us about the skills and abilities that they used. Don't you remember the postman and Officer Clemens and the scientist and all the things that we got to do in Mr. Rogers' kitchen and in his front room with people who had real jobs and tried to expose us to skills? But then... Then we went to the land of make-believe. How are we going to get to the land of make-believe today? I think we need, anybody know what we need? Oh, what? Say it out loud. We, <laughs> we need a trolley. It says neighborhood trolley for those of you who, who, who can't see. And, and, and in here we have, we have Daniel Tiger and King Friday and somebody else. Oh, Henrietta Pussycat in here. And then there's one of these that's blank for us so that we can go to. It was skills and abilities that we learned at Mr. Rogers' house. But it was spiritual gifts that we learned in the land of make-believe. See, in the land of make-believe, King Friday and Daniel Striped Tiger and Henrietta Pussycat and all the other puppets and all the other people who came to visit in this neighborhood, in this land, they helped us talk about things that were hard for us to talk about in the real world. 
They helped us to wrap our minds around concepts that might have been too big and and too scary for children at the time. Does anybody remember an episode in the 1960s right after Robert Kennedy was assassinated? And Henrietta Pussycat was very, very sad, and she asked a question. What does assassination mean? And in the neighborhood, the place of understanding, the place of safety, the place of care, the place where everybody was just a neighbor. There were no differences between us. We learned that fear was not a spiritual gift. But that peace and patience and kindness and love were to rule our day. There's another episode that that stands out for me when we think about the impact of the neighborhood and what the neighborhood did to care for us and to nurture us and to move us on and to help us remember that we were all gifted. And, and, And Mr. Rogers would stop short of saying that we were gifted by God, but if you lean in, you would hear him say, you were given gifts to take care of the neighborhood to do good where you are. You were born with those gifts and they're in you and you're wonderful just the way you are. So go use your gifts. He illustrated it to us one episode when King Friday, Wayne, he was very scared. Kings don't get scared. King Friday was very afraid of change and how things were changing in the neighborhood and how change was affecting his ability to be the king. Can't make this up. Go look it up. King Friday decided that he would resist change By building a wall. Telling you, I cannot make this up. And he sang a whole song about a wall and how the wall is going to help keep us on top and how the wall would make sure that change did not happen in our neighborhood because we had to keep change out of the neighborhood and keep things the same in the neighborhood. And the neighbors started to get scared. And they wondered, what could we do? What could we do to help King Friday understand that we're not supposed to be afraid of each other and that change is going to happen? It's inevitable. What should we do? Daniel Striped Tiger, Henrietta Pussycat, and all the neighbors got together and they blew up balloons. And they attached notes to balloons And they sent them on up to King Friday. And do you know what the note said? Peace be with you. I like you just the way you are. Do not be afraid. Everyone is invited. Everyone is included. How can we be together? Over and over again, King Friday began to receive these messages of peace and inclusion and love and joy, and he was not afraid anymore. Mr. Rogers said that the land of make-believe was a real community. 
He was teaching us how to build a real community. It was not a fantasy place where everything was happily ever after. But he said that when you have diverse people together, inevitably you're going to have conflict. So the neighborhood existed to teach us how to navigate conflict. He said the neighborhood existed to provide understanding and safety to make good on the promise that God's people would take care of you. I wonder what would happen in a world if we lived out these spiritual gifts. I wonder what would happen in our world if we were not uninformed, like Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. I I wonder if we did everything by the Spirit, how it would transform our outlook on the world and how it would transform our interaction with each other and how it would transform us at the very core of who we are. Paul said, now there are a variety of gifts. Mr. Rogers said, You are all very special. There are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. You are all very special, and I like you just the way you are. There are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. There are a variety of services, but the same Lord. There are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who Activates them in everyone. Wait, you mean I have a gift? You mean I have a gift? You mean I have a gift? You mean I have a gift and you 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 have a gift and And just because God has given us those gifts, we can't go acquire skills from them. They were given to us. They were gifted to us just because we exist. Dr. Bob, you have incredible skills as a surgeon. But your gift of empathy is from God. You have incredible musical talent. But your gift of forming a community together and loving on each other in a way that I have not seen in a long time is a gift from God. You have an incredible gift of service and of love and of joy. And it only comes because God has gifted it to you. There's nothing you can do to improve upon it. (laughs) There's nothing you can do to lose it. (laughs) There's nothing you can do to make it go away because it was woven into your very being when you were created in the image of God and God knit you together in your mother's womb. So why are you holding back on God's gifts? Mr. Rogers said, we live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say it's not my child, not my community, not my world, not my problem. Then there are those who see the need and respond. I consider these people my heroes. Friends, you are gifted to love thy neighbor. (laughs) And even better than that, you're gifted to love thy neighborhood. And we can't be who God has called us to be if we're holding out and holding back the gifts that God has given to us. 
the neighborhood trolley transported us from real life to a life where we could use our words and be free and fully who we are and be who God created us to be. I dream a world. I dream a nation. I dream a community. I dream a neighborhood. I dream a church. <laughs> Where we don't need a trolley to transport us to our best selves. But that we wake up every morning realizing who we are who we were created to be. And we use our gifts to transform our neighborhoods. Mr. Rogers said, it is sad. How sad it is that we give up on people who are just like us. All these gifts are activated by the one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually for the common good, just as the Spirit chooses. I think Martin Luther King Jr. and Mr. Rogers are two of the most famous examples of using the gifts that God has given us. You think Fred Rogers just made himself out to be Mr. Rogers? <laughs> no, it was a part of who he was, innately put together by the Most High God. You think he just knew how to talk to children because, you know, he just bumped his head one day and knew how to talk to children, Mary Lynn? No. He was gifted by the Most High God for a ministry with children that would transform adults for decades to come. I was in Houston this week at a training learning some new tools about how we work with people and how we work together. And, and somebody said, all right, it says on here, you the preacher. I was in a room full of HR consultants. What's the preacher doing here, right? <laughs> somebody said, well, what you preaching about these days? And I said, we're talking about Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and everybody in the room, all of a sudden, they were paying attention and leaning in and sitting up a little straighter and smiling a little wider because they could remember that Mr. Rogers liked them just the way they are. How could he say that and tell the truth? He knew that they had a gift. A gift that was to be shared with the world. That could, if used correctly, change the world. And change us all. To be the people that God created us to be. What's your gift? What's your gift? I don't know. They don't come with masking tape on the forehead that says, my gift is. I have some tools to help you figure it out. If you like to talk about it, I'm happy to sit and talk with you about it. What's your gift? What's the thing that wakes you up in the morning and you're so excited to live through and live out that thing that you have to jump up and go do it and if you don't do it, you might just crawl up and die? Mm -hmm. 
Go use that gift. You exist to use that gift. To love your neighbor better than you love yourself. As an extension of yourself. And to transform your neighborhood for Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God today. Let the church say, amen. All right, here's your invitation for today. It it says invitation to Christian discipleship. So here's the invitation to be a Christian disciple. Go use your gifts and transform this world. Do it in a tangible way so that you can come back next week and tell me how you changed the world. It's not a big ask. It's a little tiny ask. I'm just asking you to be yourself and change a little corner of this world. Go in peace. Know that you were created with gifts and loved and adored by God in each and every one of us. Know that I like you just the way you are. Let's live in the land of make-believe so that we can be the people that God created us to be. Now to the one that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Almighty God. Be all glory, honor, and praise. And the people of God say...